every child of God should not forget we are We are in this covenant journey. We are placed in this covenant journey. Where we are, that's where the covenant is fulfilled. Even in your mistake, even in your, uh, even in your mistake, even in your weaknesses, the covenant is where covenant is fulfilled. Wherever you are, 2019. Through RCA. Pastor Liu gave us the message, and through him, God had allowed me to listen to this word to 37 nation and 24 healing and 24 summit system. And this really hit my heart, and I really wanted to, really want this to be fulfilled in my life, and at the same time, but I don't really know how to put this word in the practice because 424 is really, it was hard for me to do 24 healing, 24 summit. And I couldn't come to think of it, I think of the method, how to put this into practice. So I came to actually forget about 24 healing, 24 summit. But I was thinking of 20. Uh, 237 nation word evangelization. When the covenant comes to your mind and in your heart, there are times you may forget about it. That's when God will allow you problems. 2020 March, we faced COVID, uh, something we've never faced in our lives, in history. Everything was shut down. Now everyone's getting sick and they're getting disease. In first place, now that we, can, we couldn't even go to school, we couldn't go to church. Everyone's getting sick in mind and their thoughts. Not only that, they're physically getting sick. Now we are facing the age where 24 healing is necessary. It's not something we can simply, oh, there will be 24-7 healing system. But it's something that we need today right now. And that we need a spiritual healing and mental healing and physical healing for everyone. And you can go to church. You can have proper worship. Now we can't even meet each other. But we need to restore the spiritual thing. That's when I come to think. This was a message that hit my heart in 2019. He gives you the message before something happened. He allows you to have this word deeply in your heart. Before you face problems and accidents. If we are missing the word, that's when we go into panic. It's not because of COVID that we got into panic. Without the word, you will be in panic all the time. So the word that God speaks, God had spoken to you, is not something that will be gone soon. Even when you don't remember, that will come to the fulfillment. What do you see the covenant in you? When you face problems, what do you see the covenant? What, what's the covenant that God reminds you of when you're going through such a situation and difficulties? What is God telling you? And never forget, God has already spoken to you regarding what you're going through. It might be something new that you're facing, but it is something God already knows that he already spoke to you. Go back to the word. God has an answer for that. What did we face? Black Lives Matter. This is when I come to think there is ideology conflict. In between so many remnants and in this nation and all over the world. They don't even know what this is, but people are supporting this. And they want to be part of this. That's when I realized this is really needed. 24-7 summit system. People who study well will be the elite without right ideology. They will become an elite with something else imprinted in them. And they will, through their ideology, which are mostly, most likely from their scar, they will try to build another education, another culture, 
and they will come up with another answer for you. Those who are elite with the wrong ideology are very decisive and they can deceive you very easily with what they possess. And we want to have that just like they have. That's when, we, when I realized we need this. So how can we do this? How can we make this into 24-7 in our lives? Pastor Yu, uh, through 2020, and our Pastor John have spoken several times in the beginning of 2020. And if you remember this, uh, this is fulfillment. You know what he said? He said, we need a house where remnants can come and gather and spend their time all day long. That's what Pastor Jang was keep speaking in the messages in 2020, beginning of the 2020. Have we ever hold that as your covenant? We might hold it as our covenant, but we simply forget about it. But what happened? We got to have a mission now. Where remnants can gather 24-7, 24-7, it could be healing for them. 24-7, they are here to be healed of their ideologies. And here is where, now it's a, it's a hub for the remnants to come together to have their time and to prepare for the word evangelization. God has prepared everything for you. Are you in the covenant? When we came into the covenant mission home, as you guys know, it was really bad. The condition of the house was really bad. Is there a problem where covenant is proclaimed and covenant allows you to be there? You know, the dens of line is not there to face death. Dens of line is there for you to face the fulfillment of the word of God. So what should we do when we face the bad condition of the mission? All of a sudden, one of senior deacons in our church, she said, Oh, I will spend $10,000 for the mission home. And let's have reconstruction of the mission home. And remnants were there. Remnants were there to spend their time to build, reconstruct the mission home. Isn't that good news? I don't think she spent more than 10000 because remnants spent their time, their life, their strength for the mission home. And I think that's better. Better than we hire someone to reconstruct our mission, remnants spend their time, their strengths, and their energy for the mission. It became their house. That's the answer. Again, mission is without air conditioner, without heater. How can, how can we solve this? We should pray. We should hold on to the covenant. God will give us the answer in His time. All of a sudden, another senior deaconess, Ask us, I want to pay $10,000 for air conditional and heater at Mission Hope. Are we worried about money? Are we worried about, oh, what I should do next step? No, the thing is this. Are you in the covenant? God will provide you everything. Seek the first kingdom of God. He knows what you need more than you know what you need. Now that we got to have mouse, cockroaches, Coyotes, wild cats, street cats. Our house became zoo in La Mirada. So we don't need to spend any other money to go to anywhere else. We can just simply enjoy our mission. And here you can even enjoy catching mouse. Now that we don't see mouses anymore, uh, cockroaches, I haven't seen cockroaches for about a month. Coyotes haven't seen and street cat haven't seen for a while. God's protecting his covenant, right? He protects his covenant. He's steadfast with his covenant. Are we in the covenant? That's our question. You know, away from the covenant, we ask God, protect me, lead me, and guide me. You must know God protects his promise. He's steadfast with his covenant. 
When we are away from God, we ask God, can you please change your plan? No. Instead of you, instead of you try to change God's plan, why not you change your plan to come inside of the covenant? Before the Red Sea, why do you want to change God and complain to God that He has led you here? When in the covenant you know He has purpose that He had intended to bring you before the Red Sea. Are you in the covenant, outside the covenant? Outside the covenant, you may have many dreams that's already incorrect. Outside the covenant, you may be billionaires, but the sad news is this. God will not use a cent of your asset for His kingdom. If we are outside of the covenant, are you inside of covenant? He's steadfast. He protects. He fulfills His covenant. So are we in the covenant. RC 2020. We received a message from the conference. What did it say? All the essence of the life of every mankind has been manipulated. It's been distorted. Your essence has become me, which is Satan's snare, and that's your frame, and that has become your trap. Satan has manipulated your essence of your life, that you're living for me, and we start to lose God in our lives. In missional, what should we do? We should help kids and the remnant to follow the covenant by abandoning me. Abandoning me is not giving up on me. Literally, abandoning me is find me whom God has created. Find me and find things that God has given to me. Find the field where God is leading me towards. This is what we need to change in missional, in our ministry. God has keep giving us the message and the covenant for our future. When you worry about your future, God is speaking towards your future. What did he say? This culture is a culture of Nephilim. Nephilim means fall from above. And your culture, your ideology, your life, the products that you make fell from above. And it's already dark. It's already damaged. It's already full of scars. That's the culture we are buying these days. That's the culture we spend our life to buy. We spend our time to enjoy. It's a culture of darkness. And what happened, what's the result of this, is that people all get sick. They're sick in their mind, in their thought, and in their life. They're mentally sick, spiritually sick, and physically sick. Nothing is normal, and a sick person lives centered around you. Have you ever got sick? You know, all you can think is yourself. When you get really sick, have you ever met any people have autism? They think about themselves alone. They can't think about others. You know what's happening in this age? People are spiritually suffering autism. They can't help others. They can think about others. They only think of themselves in the culture of darkness and result, they're getting sick more and more. This is what's happening right now in this age. What is your covenant? Why do you think God has called you? Why do you think God has allowed you in this place? Listen to His covenant.
Everything is in His covenant. In His covenant, it's already promised the work of the Spirit is promised. In His covenant, God will, God will fulfill gospelization in your life. In the covenant, not outside of the covenant. In the covenant, God will gospelize you. What does it mean? He will wear you the, the glass of gospel that you will start to see everything through the eyes of the gospel. You're not there to judge or judge someone or judging you. You're there to save others. God will make you and God will help you to see God's unchangeable plan in every situation that you're going through. God will gospelize your nature, your thoughts, and your mind. In the covenant, it's been promised. Darkness will be broken. Don't ask God to break the force of darkness outside of covenant. Are you in the covenant? It is promised that Satan will be bound. Darkness will, will run away and curses will stop. All the obstacles will be crushed in the covenant. He established His kingdom upon your thoughts, upon your mind, upon your life. Here in His kingdom, we'll be able to choose what we are supposed to choose. So many times, we falter away from the covenant. And that's what Satan desires in your life. Through the answer, he wants you to lose the covenant. Because of problem, he wants you to lose the covenant. Because what you experience, he wants you to lose a covenant. So now, may you come to open your eyes what Satan wants you to lose, what God wants to restore. Covenant. In covenant, he will establish you as historical spiritual summit. In His covenant. Don't simply try to make money a lot. If He's not using that, why do you need that money? Why are you so obsessed with buying new houses or possess many houses? If you have thousand houses, are you going to sleep in thousand houses every different day? Let me tell you, you're rich you only wear one underwear, right? Your rich doesn't mean that you're wearing 700 underwear at the same time. You only wear one underwear. Are you so rich? You're going to only drive one car. Do you have so many properties? You will only sleep in your house. Nothing's going to change that much. Even by possessing a lot of assets in your hand, you will still wear one underwear, one on top, one on bottom. You will only have one girlfriend, one husband. Or are you dreaming of having thousand girlfriends with your money? That's a wrong covenant. Are you wish, do you wish to have thousand husbands? Well, think of May you imagine that you have a thousand husbands like Andre. You have a thousand Andre around you. Thousand Shinji around you. Thousand Lion around you. Thousand Angelica around you. Yo, one is enough, guys. One is enough. Don't cause yourself headache. One is enough. Everything is in the covenant. 
So, leave your 24 hours. What does that mean? For the covenant, what did God told Abraham? Genesis chapter 12, 12, 1. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. What does he say? Leave your family. Don't live for your family. You believe your family is a one family that really need much money, that your family has raised you to make you make money. That's a wrong ideology and that's from scars. Leave your country, leave your kindred, leave from where you have received. Now imprint with the new covenant. We are the new creation in Christ Jesus. You are already obsessed with your 24-7. It could be drugs. It could be cell phone. It could be SNS. It could be drama. It could be music. You're obsessed with your 24-7. You know, in Michigan, we have a rule that you cannot use your phone after 10. It was 11, but we changed the time to 10. And I, I collected their phone at 10 p.m., and one of them went to restroom. And I'm like, all of a sudden, he went to restroom after I collected all the phone, and I realized his phone was gone. And he was in the restroom with his phone, and I asked him, why do you need your phone in the restroom? He's like, it's because I'm suffering diarrhea. Okay, I understand. But what does that mean? Then why does it make you need your phone? He's like, oh, when I concentrate on phone or something else, I can get over diarrhea easily. What's your message? When you have a problem, concentrate on what? Phone or Christ? Culture or Christ? Curses or Christ? You know, we are obsessed with our 24-7. You know, our kids in the mission of Ryan, right after the worship, you know where they go towards? They go to their room. What do they do? Play game. Right after. What does that mean? Do you think that means, oh, they're using their leisure time for a game? No. They're obsessed with the game, so they're looking for any leisure time so that they can spend and waste their time on playing game. That's what it means by you're obsessed with your 24-7. Even in a time you're not doing drugs, you are ready to do the drugs. Already you're obsessed with it. You know you're saying it's because somebody asked me to do the drug. No. It's already your brain and your thought and your mind is already ready for drugs. And when someone proposing you, you're ready to accept it right there because you're already obsessed with it. Leave your 24-7. I'm playing game when I have leisure time. No. You're already obsessed with your game. Even when you don't play, you're dreaming of playing game. Thinking of playing game. You're thinking of a drama. Thinking of a movie. When you have leisure, that's when you do what you're obsessed with. Because you, were, you must do the homework, you weren't able to do it. But while, even while you're doing homework, your thought is already on drama. Oh, I'm going to watch this drama after homework. I'm going to watch this YouTube after homework. I'm going to do this after worship. You're here, but your mind and your thoughts are already over there. You're already at home on your bed and enjoying your time. That's how much we are obsessed. That's addiction, in other words. That's addiction. 24-7, leave your 24-7. It's not going to harm you. It's not going to hurt you. That will save you. What did the Lord say to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2? He promised, I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. 
live here 24 7, where close yourself with His covenant. Confess after me. I don't need to play game. If you can confess it, you're already addicted to it. Confess after me. I don't need to watch drama. I don't need to be on SNS. I don't need my phone. I don't need my parents. We need Christ, guys. Confess after me. I don't need money. You're not chasing after money. You are blessing. Why are you so obsessed with money? What did God bless Abraham? I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse, and you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Not only you, all your families. What does it mean? You don't need to compete. He will do all on behalf of you for His covenant to be fulfilled. So where are you? Are you in the covenant? Are you outside of the covenant? Genesis chapter 12, 4. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. Because God will show you the way, you don't need your opinion. Because he will lead you to where you need to be, you don't need your plan. You don't need to argue with God. He has prepared all for you. You're indispensable. Amen? You are. Who will break you? Who will block you when God guides you and leads you? His covenant, therefore, is the authority. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, 12 to 13, what did he do with the covenant? This indispensable man had used his disbelief as his method to overcome the problems. So he's literally selling his wife by saying, oh, this my wife is my sister. He was scared that the Egyptian, the Pharaoh, will kill him. But what happened to him in Genesis chapter 12, 16 to 17? When Abraham went to Pharaoh to give Pharaoh his wife, this is what happened. And for her sake, he dealt well with Abraham, that Abraham was given sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. He's given all. Because he used disbelief. That's the authority of the covenant. Your nature cannot destroy you. Your wrong imprint cannot destroy you. Not only that, what is God telling you through this story? Is he telling you so, following your disbelief? Is he telling you so, following your own thoughts and mind? What is he telling you through this? He's telling you, Genesis chapter 13, verse 12 and 18. You know what God is telling you? He's telling you, even when you use your disbelief, I'm saving you from your disbelief. He's telling you, you don't need disbelief. You don't need your plan. You don't need humanism. You don't need help of others. You don't need any other methods. You only need a covenant. So Abraham's leaving his, his nephew Rod, and now Abraham alone building the altar before God. What is he telling you today, guys? 
Aren't you again the remnant of the main figure of this age today? No matter how much you may mistake, no matter how much disbelief you're disturbed with, aren't you still the remnant to save this age? What are you going to hold on to? Come to know and understand you don't need help of others. You don't need humanism. You don't need money. You don't need disbelief. You don't need accurate eyes to see reality. You need His covenant alone. He wants you to resolute one thing in your life. All you need is covenant today. Conclusion is this. Set up set up realistic system. Not only to save you, but to save your families, to save the United States, save your culture, save your study, save your money. Make a realistic system that can bring the covenant fulfilled in your life. First, may you never compromise this in your life. Don't ever think of compromise in worship. Don't ever. Once you compromise worship, this will become your nature. It will be easy for you to skip worship once you skip worship. Do not compromise worship. This is a realistic system for you to have the answer in your life. Never lose a blessing of the worship. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have worship for you. You don't need any other schedule for Saturday. Do you have nothing to do on Saturday? We have worship schedule on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. With your friends, what do you have to do? Come to Haksa Church, have worship in your life. Again, never compromise your tarapang time. When you compromise your worship and your tarapang, look at what you do in the midst of this time. When you're away from tarapang, what do you do? When you're away from the worship, what do you do? We know we do something unnecessary, right? Do not compromise this. I know in the worship, sometimes it doesn't really hit you at all. Sometimes you, don't, you feel nothing from the worship. That doesn't mean that you're not healed. You don't understand much. That doesn't mean that God's not working. You know, I had a surgery on my left leg. And except the left leg, all the body part on my, all of my body part was so awake. So in the midst of surgery, I've asked so many questions to doctors and nurses. What do you use that for? How long is going to happen like this? How long are you going to have a surgery? And they were giving me answers oh, regarding medical thing. And I couldn't understand most of them. Does it mean that my legs not healed? They're still healing my legs. Even when I don't understand 1% of what they're saying. Worship and tarapang. Even when you don't feel something, you don't experience much, you don't understand a percent of it. God is fulfilling His covenant. He's healing you. He's strengthening you. Never forget. And do not compromise your summit time, the daily worship. Find your spiritual routine that can wake you up and strengthen you. Again, this is what Pastor Jang says. We want to look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. This is what Paul said. So that you may approve what is excellent in your life. In other words, that is the wisdom. 
you approve what is excellent in you, and that is wisdom. And the wisdom is nothing but hold on to covenant, enjoy covenant, and proclaim covenant. This is a definition of wisdom according to our perfect message. We hold on to the covenant, enjoy the covenant, proclaim the covenant. May you approve what is excellent. And the excellent in our lives is nothing but covenant itself. Christ alone is excellent. He alone is enough. He alone is sufficient. He alone is complete. He alone is everything. May you approve what is excellent in your life so that you may be fruitful with righteousness and fruit of righteousness and His glory. Set up realistic system in your life. Live your 24-7. Let Him replace your 24-7 with his covenant. And we'll have time of prayer. And we'll sing deep prayer. And as we sing this song, doesn't matter how well you sing or not, open your mouth, hold on to the covenant, and confess with your heart. Bless. 
blessings come around. I pray I will not be proud. I will not be proud. And when things all disappear, alone I'm left standing here. accept we have such disbelief in our heart depths of our heart and now we understand how much we are imprinted with the wrong scars wrong ideology and wrong habits uh, we accept our weaknesses that we don't fake ourselves anymore because even through our weaknesses we believe and we heard today you will bless us you will guide us for word evangelization so Lord, today we confess we don't need game anymore. We don't need that much money. We don't need to watch that much drama. We don't need to play that much tennis. We don't need to be obsessed with our study. We don't need to be obsessed with our money or tennis racket. Lord, we confess all we need is Christ. Let us approve what is excellent in our lives. We hold on to Christ. We want to enjoy Christ. And we want to proclaim Christ. Help us be in the covenant as you wish us to be in the covenant. Let your covenant be fulfilled. Even when we forget about it, let us be returning to the covenant every single day. Remind us the strength of your covenant, the authority of the covenant, and help us be imprinted only with the Christ alone. And may you replace our 24 with your covenant and with your word evangelization. Bless us to set up the realistic system to bring the word evangelization closer, our, closer to our life. And bless us to be the witness of Christ and disciple of Christ to the ends of the earth. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.